So I wanted to get into the issue of gun control because sure. this is a big week after what happened in Florida that mm -hmm. people are talking about, very concerned about it. And I know that you're a big Second Amendment rights supporter sure. and you believe that the SAFE Act should be repealed. And Absolutely. that's the gun control law that Governor Cuomo got through right after the Sandy Hook uh, Absolutely. shootings in not Connecticut just, a few years ago. Not just Governor Cuomo mm -hmm. and the Republicans and Democrats together. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. got together and got that one through. Yes, that's right. Everybody mm -hmm. did. It's been the law for a few that's years. Correct. But you still think that that should be repealed. Without even with what question. Okay. At, because the SAFE and Act so, didn't why? make anybody safer. The safe, you don't think it did in New York? No one safer. What the SAFE Act did is it made a bunch of people who were legal gun owners criminals overnight. That's step one. It made people criminals overnight. Mm -hmm. The second thing. And we thing, know that there are gun owners who certainly feel that way and are not pleased, <laughs> to say the yes, least, with that part of they it. They feel that way because it's true. They became criminals overnight, number one. Second thing, we said, oh, gun, over, gun owners, please be afraid. Be afraid to report. Be afraid to help the police out. Be afraid to help. Be afraid to do anything because the cops might come and take your guns. Be afraid. So now it's going to be harder for law enforcement to actually solve crimes. That's number two. But the third thing is, we're actually arresting people who come into our state from other states. We're putting people in Rikers Island because of that. Well, the because there's different. The SAFE creates more victims. Yeah, there's different, you know, different states have different laws, right? So if you Yes, come but you shouldn't state, be yeah. arresting someone. This is a little, I'm not making this up. Do your mm -hmm. homework if you want to. Mm -hmm. If you have your weapon in a bag with your ammunition in the same bag, you get arrested. The weapon's not loaded. That's how New York State works. That is backward. Every time you try to create zero tolerance, you make things worse. That's simply how it works. No one's safer. No one is safer. If that kid wanted to kill people in New York, he would have. Safe Act or no Safe Act. It doesn't make anyone safer. It just makes us feel safer. We think we're doing something. The people who are criminals are still criminals. Now you might say, but Larry, if he didn't have that uh, AR-15, he couldn't have killed as many people as he killed. 17, I believe it was, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Couldn't have killed 17 people. Okay. Well, that's true, though, isn't it? It is not. He could have simply rang the fire alarm bell, had the kids come out into the, uh, into the uh, parking lot, and run them over with a truck. How do I know that? That happened in Nice. 80-some-odd people dead. So you're saying if there's a will, people are going to find I'm a way to do is, something like this? What I'm saying is this is a Band-Aid, mm -hmm. right? This is a Band-Aid. Here's the bigger problem. I don't want to touch the branch. I want to touch the root. The problem is we have unhappy people. Unhappy people is the problem. If you take away his gun, he uses something else. If he's unhappy, he will do bad things. There are two things that most of these people, one that they have and one that they don't have. Two things, two pieces you'll find a commonality between most of these shooters. Number one, the thing they don't have, a girlfriend. The thing they do have, a prescription to psychotropic drugs. Those are two commonalities that are almost, not every one of them, but many of them. Now, I'm not saying if you're on drugs, you're a bad person. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is many of these people went there because they were depressed or feeling bad. And one of the reasons was they don't have good relationships. You don't have to have a girlfriend to be happy. But it's a, it's a good indicator. You should have good friends, good social life. Well, you don't if, have good social life and you, and you have depression. That's a recipe for destruction. Well, Let's what, make happier well, people. Well, what about limiting guns to people who are deemed dangerously mentally ill, as we have in New York State? Sure, Is that part look, of a solution? If, if you want to say someone has an ongoing problem and therefore should not have a firearm, I'm not necessarily against that. That's not the safe act. The safe fact is, oh, you have a, a piece of equipment that doesn't match what we decide is the right equipment, now you go to jail. That's not safe act. If you're telling me there's someone who has an actual problem that can be documented by more than one doctor, that this person may be violent, this people, okay. If you're telling me someone has threatened someone and a cop should come at them because they've threatened someone, sure, that's what cops should be doing, I, I would hope. Here's what I also know. Most cops don't want to enforce the safe act. Prosecutors do, but cops don't. Cops want to be going after people who are, who are criminals. If they see someone who's threatening someone, cops join to do that. They, if someone's threatening you on, on Facebook saying you're going to murder someone or kill someone, cops should be investigating that. Yeah, that's a threat. Well done, police force. Go do that. But because someone's traveling through our state and they happen to have a firearm in, their back, in, their, in the back of their car legally owned in another state, why are cops enforcing that in any way, shape, or form? I know most cops don't want to enforce that. They want to go after bad guys. Not the good guys. So the larger picture then, the school shootings, mm -hmm. lots of concern. You know, obviously the kids are very upset. They want the adults to finally do something of about course. it. Of so, course. Uh, so what do you think would be some steps that would be, that would be good to take? Sure. It, it's, it's a revamping of the entire culture, which is uh, an insane task. I was going to say, it's, I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> got to start somewhere, But we though, can right? start somewhere. Yeah. And one mm -hmm. way of starting is, if there are school shootings, fix schools. 
right? K through 12 is a silly concept. It should be K through 10. The last two years of high school, why are so many kids simply sitting around smoking weed and playing video games? You know, some kids should be studying AP history, some kids should be studying science, yeah. some kids should be plumbers. You think they you know, get plumbers. through it faster. Yeah. It's happening yeah. already. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. this, the CTE they're doing here in, in Syracuse upstate, right? This idea of getting kids right into doing work at 16. In New York City, my daughter's going to a high school where you finish your high school in, at 16. And now the next two years are college. It's already happening. This goes back to my idea of why does Albany decide what every school should do? Why does Albany decide what is successful for a child? Why aren't the parents and the kids deciding what that is? And that means K through 10, the last two years, is what that kid should do to have success. But the more important piece, revamping society. Most kids today, if you're between 16 and say 24, you're going to have at least five careers. At least five, I've had five. And I'm 49, and I've had five. Yeah. Most kids are gonna have at least yeah, five nobody's careers. Nobody's gonna have just one job Exactly. Yeah, My wife is going to school now, <laughs> She's going to school now for a doctorate. She's in her 40s. Don't be mad, wife. She's in her 40s. Young 40s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's in her 40s, right? She's, she's going to school now to get a doctorate. So why do we think that somebody should spend the, the first 22 years of their life preparing for one career? That's silly. It's backward. It's not the way it should be. You're 16. You know enough to survive in society. Take those next two years to begin your first career. And you'll go back to college or back to high school or back to whatever the next time you choose your next career. That's the future. I don't want to be backward. I want to be forward. New York needs to be moving forward. Well, Excelsior, right? Always going higher, right? It hasn't been happening recently. Let's make that happen. So in the very few remaining moments we have left, I wanted to ask you somewhat about uh, your chief opponent in the race, uh, Governor Cuomo. My only opponent. And uh, he's been, well, there's a couple of Not really. Republicans that, Not really. <laughs> that want to be in there. His former uh, top aide is on trial right now, corruption mm -hmm. trial, federal corruption trial for, for bribery, Joe Prococo. Have you been following the trial? Yes, and, and this is a great point. It's another reason why I'm running, right? If people think, well, Larry, you're a third party. No, I'm the only alternative. I'm the only alternative. If people figure out that Cuomo is as corrupt as he is, and the Republicans are as corrupt as they are, they will look for someone who's not corrupt. I'm transparent. I'm not perfect by any means. I'm just a kid from the Bronx. I don't have a thousand uh, resume checkpoints that someone may like to, to be, be governor. And that's awesome. That makes me better. So yeah, it's a time. But to be clear, I'm not vindictive. I'm not about punishment. We are always about punishment. People think, well, great, we'll prosecute him and he'll go to jail. That doesn't solve our problem. Punishing people is fine if you need to be mm -hmm. punished, but it doesn't solve our problem. Our culture is broken. The problem is we prosecute them and go, see, he went to jail. Now it's all fixed. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. We have systematic corruption in our system. We must repair that. So I hope if he's guilty, he goes to jail. That's awesome, but that doesn't matter for New Yorkers. We're not going to eat better. We're not going to have better farms or families or factories or homes because some guy goes well, to jail. One of the things that's been brought up in the trial is this, and it's perfectly legal, is the pay to play atmosphere that's going on. Absolutely. With, uh, corporations giving money and yep. essentially expecting favors. And there's been mm -hmm. a lot of talk about that. Now, as a libertarian, you probably would not want to limit campaign donations to candidates, but are there things that you would do to stop this pay to play? It's, it's, a, it's a great point. The way it should work, first off, I know it is law, but it is still wrong. Corporations are not people. The idea that corporations are people is embarrassing that we've done this. It's just so terrible. So, they shouldn't be people, number one. So they, they, so they should not have the right to contribute to candidates? That is correct. They can't vote. Why in the world are they contributing? You are correct. That is a silly idea. It should not exist. With that in mind, it does exist. I get it, mm -hmm. but it is wrong. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, the key is transparency. Transparency is the key. Now, I know what we try to do. We try instead to say, well, we'll make rules and regulations on how they can and what's right and what's wrong. And when you do that, you ensure crony capitalism, you ensure corruption, because only big business can afford the legal teams to get around the regulations. And they will always get around the regulations, because in reality, it's good for the politicians and it's good for the companies to get around the regulations. So they're on the same team. They will find a way. They're ensuring the little guy never gets up. How do I know that? I'm the little guy moving up the ladder. I'm the one who has to hire people. I have to lose, I have to lose time for my own business. I have to not make money so I can hire people to make sure I don't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. We wonder so why good people don't run. These are the reasons why. Why would they? So they can get fined and go to jail? So would you advocate for a law not to allow corporations to, to contribute to campaigns? That would or, be awesome. Yeah, so Depend, that would be something that you would... I say that, but let mm. me be clear, the devil's always in details. 
right? The concept is a good concept, but how would it actually work? I'd have to see the law first. So you've raised $100,000 over. so far. Any corporations gave you money? No corporations gave me money. No, no, not yet. Not yet. No. But maybe they should. If you're if you're watching corporations, you should give me money. LarrySharp.com. So you wouldn't. So you wouldn't be. You wouldn't be opposed to that. No. I'm, no. To be clear, it's wrong. But if I need it to win, I would take it to win. Of course, I would. Absolutely. Yes.